anyway, welcome. I, uh, I wanted to start out by first just asking for a show of hands so that I know uh, just how nerdy the audience is. Um, if you could tell me if you're a machine learning engineer, data scientist, you're kind of on the, on, on the, on the deep science side of things, okay. Uh, infrastructure, okay. Management, I know, I have to, okay, sorry. Um, and um, operations, support, installs, okay, great, all right. Um, I'm gonna go a little geekier then. Um, in our conversation today, because we've got so many technical folks in the room. So I'm David Hall. Um, I run Lambda's on-prem business. Um, what that effectively means is that if you come to Lambda and you need a few thousand GPUs delivered to your data center or you need us to host them, um, my team's figured out how to do that and we hopefully do it really well for you. And as part of that exercise, uh, what I'm gonna talk about today is our experience with Grace Hopper 200, with the GH200 chip, which uh, was meant to go prime time, but then kind of got pulled back a little bit in favor of the Blackwell uh, releases. Um, but we've had some really cool experiences getting this uh, up and running and uh, even getting some of the results out of it. So uh, we're gonna share that with you today. We'll talk about uh, what we set out to do and what we accomplished. And um, how many of you are familiar with Lambda? If, if I don't get, okay, I, I'll, I'll go quick. Lambda is um, an AI infrastructure provider. Uh, we were founded by AI researchers that just thought it was too expensive to keep going uh, and, and spending the money the way, that, the way that they were, so they came up with some workstations. Uh, and we got some great pictures I'd love to show you sometime of, um, literally 20 workstations sitting on wooden shelves in a corner, um, and that was our cloud. Uh, that's, that's how we were doing our first AI workloads. Well, we looked at those for a while and we said, you know, uh, we, we could make money off of this, and, and so we started reselling our ideas, and uh, workstations expanded to servers, servers expanded to clusters, and uh, you know, now we're, uh, one of the few companies in the world that can deliver clusters in the 8,000, 16,000 GPU range. Um, we, uh, our leadership team is very unique um, in, in the world because of the eight of us on the team, uh, there's two of us that aren't machine learning engineers, one of them's the CFO, um, and um, you know, the rest of us are pretty nerdy. And so we get pretty excited about doing fun things for customers, and I think that's one of the reasons why NVIDIA has recognized us as one of their partners of the year for the last four years. Um, we've got a great ecosystem of partners. Uh, we're so grateful for Weights and Biases inviting us here today. Um, we offer Weights and Biases as part of our MLOps platform, um, along with RunEI, also here at the event. If you haven't talked to these guys, they've got great tools. If you're a machine learning team that is struggling with uh, managing your models, managing the data, managing your runs, uh, these are incredible products that on the right infrastructure like Lambda's um, make your job as engineers better and your product and your outcomes uh, more sustainable. We partner with a number of storage and data center um, and uh, services companies as well. They're all up here. Uh, if, if, you, if you want the, the, the dirty details on why we picked them, uh, please catch me afterward. So we set out um, about, uh, let's see, it would have been late September of last year to build the first GH200 clusters. We wanted to be the first ones in the world, and we were. Uh, we had it stood up four days before the announcement. Okay, we had customers on it four days before the announcement. So we, uh, we, we took what we knew about um, the kind of distributed training architectures and, and we decided to build this. I'll give you some detail on that. What we did really different than NVIDIA's reference architecture for GH200 was we, we wanted to see if this could be a, a training platform. A lot of NVIDIA's uh, announcements to, to date had been that this was the great inferencing solution. Um, but we looked at it and we thought, I, I think there's some real game that this chipset has um, in doing deep learning training. So we built it using the same kind of 
high-speed interconnect fabric model that we've used uh, for you know, H200, A100, et cetera. So uh, to really get geeky, um, here's a picture of our servers. Um, no, but the, we, we built this such that uh, we wanted teams to be able to come in and just kind of give this a try. So we built it in kind of 10 unit clumps and we can expand that 10, 20, 30, but that set of 10 worked very nicely for the rack design and the, and the networking. Uh, we connected all of those nodes uh, with each other across uh, the 400 gig uh, InfiniBand fabric. And why did we do that? Well, in the training world, that exchange in between GPUs is very important. That's why NVLink has done so well in this space because it's a very fast interconnect. Um, because the GH200 model is separate servers, each one with a single CPU and a single GPU on it, um, we needed to interconnect with as fast as we could get with the lowest latency we could get, so we picked InfiniBand 400 gig. Um, we connected a really simple storage solution in front of this and some head nodes to manage it and threw it all behind 100 gig ethernet fabric for management. Um, so relatively simple design. Um, our intent was to see and to let a number of customers see how this new kind of chip and GPU all together worked. Uh, and we had some fun results. Um, the first thing that we found out is that um, the first time people release boards, it's a bumpy ride. Um, so um, the, the first few units that came off were, were tough. Um, the, the, the first unit we got, um, we were surprised. It had a version of Ubuntu that we didn't know existed. Um, and so fun things like that show up as you're doing these type of experiments. Um, but as we got closer to release date, we and NVIDIA and uh, the server supplier, QCT, Quanta was who we partnered with on this particular design. Um, it just we, we had a great relationship, daily, multiple times a daily calls to get patches and drivers working, et cetera. Um, which leads me to, uh, the, the next one, it's, we, we picked uh, Bluefield on this one. Is, is anybody not familiar with Bluefield? What, okay, let me tell you a little bit about it. So Bluefield is NVIDIA Networkings, so the old Mellanox guys. Um, it's NVIDIA Networkings, um, uh, effectively smart NIC. It, um, it has a, uh, an, a multiple core ARM processor alongside a traditional network stack NIC. And it can do InfiniBand or Ethernet, but it allows you to add intelligence to the network path that flows through that NIC. Okay, so you can do interesting things like optimize storage paths. You can start removing packets and do shorter um, latency communication uh, in Ethernet or InfiniBand. And this is what InfiniBand actually uses is some of that intelligence and, and it can offload on the Bluefield. So interesting play. Bluefield is becoming increasingly important in NVIDIA's reference architectures and so we wanted to make sure that we understood it here. Um, the third thing that we learned is that Grace was not so graceful. Um, ARM has not been something that the AI community has used a lot of. And so recompiling libraries, recompiling compilers, recompiling um, all kinds of uh, very rudimentary tools uh, was a critical part of what we did early on. Um, and you probably heard NVIDIA's announcements about NIMS. Um, why is NIM so critical to NVIDIA? Because they've ripped out all of the processor specific stuff from all of their containers and renamed them NIMS. Um, but all the containers that used to be x86 based now aren't and th they got a new name. And so, uh, and then and, and they'll grow that family a little bit, but that's critical because now they need to run on both ARM and x86. Um, the next thing is, is that um, virtual machines may or may not work always on ARM processors. Um, and so we had to spend a number of weeks working through and submitting PRs uh, to KVM to make sure that we could get VMs running. 
And then the last thing that we learned, thankfully, was that clusters are clusters. You connect stuff with NICs, and they seem to work the same no matter what the GPU or CPU is. So it all came together pretty nicely, uh, just in time for the announcement. And what did we find out? Um, CPU offload is awesome, okay? But it's not awesome all the time. Where CPU offload is super valuable is when you need to do some type of large data load or you need to do data manipulation as part of the beginning of your epoch. So think things like stable diffusion. It kills it in stable diffusion because I can load so much of that image into memory and then I can chunk it over 900 gigabyte per second lanes into the GPU, okay? So take 900 GBB PS and compare that to what you're getting over like 100 gig ethernet from your S3 bucket, okay? Com game changer for how much data you can shove into the GPU as fast as it can do it. Um, as a result, inferencing to NVIDIA's early uh, notes screams because now I can take the entire data set, I can inference pieces of it, or I can inference the whole of it using um, the new memory model. <clears throat> the, and, and we proved out uh, with our tests that, yeah, uh, you can get a 5x performance increase over standard H100 x86, um, a 10x increase over standard A100 x86, um, but Again, zero inference and batch sizes uh, really matter. Um, and as your batch sizes increase, you get better performance. Um, as we've done the training performance, uh, we got more this week, so I'll give you the highlights on what we found this week. Um, but we expected that the lack of NVLink would limit um, some all-to-all -all performance. Um, we saw this at a very minimal level with our 10 GPU solution. Um, the, the performance difference was under 1% difference, okay? Um, and, and so that was a little bit surprising to us. We played a little bit with how we were loading the memory. Um, we could get that back to kind of standard performance um, between servers um, with, you know, more traditional memory sizes. Um, the big surprise to us was what happened um, with the performance lines when we were exchanging very large um, tokens between GPUs. And so that's when the performance started to lag. And uh, for um, those of you that don't play with tokens every day, um, tokens is the output of your uh, layer in a, in a neural network. And so as I take that set of uh, values and I need to push it and share it with other GPUs, it becomes very critical that that connection is quick. Um, so what we saw with GH200 got us even more excited about what we're going to see with GB200 NVL72 um, because now um, I can go from um, an NVLink domain of one, effectively, no NVLink, um, to an NVLink domain of 72. Um, with all of the coherent memory advantages that we saw in the earlier tests, and we also get to see, um, you know, all of the, the, the positive speed associated with um, the single GPU performance. So, as I mentioned, we've delivered these as 10 or 20 uh, unit clusters. We have these available in our cloud today. Uh, reservations start at one month. Um, my recommendation to you is if your organization is at all looking at GB200, which won't show up until next year, um, that you give GB200 a try. Um, there's enough of a learning curve uh, for tooling and, um, and even some of the ways that you're doing network management uh, in your data exchange that we really recommend that customers that are anxious for that take some time to play um, with Grace Hopper. And uh, as, as I said, we've got stuff that we can get you into in just a few days usually. 
Um, I wanted to uh, also take this time to announce something else that we've added to the Lambda Cloud and Lambda Platform, and that's our managed Kubernetes offering. Uh, we're working uh, rigorously with weights and biases to make sure that they can integrate with uh, what we've done here and uh, with the Grace environment. And so we're expecting to see some of that show up uh, mid-year. But our managed Kubernetes environment is um, what we're layering on top of all of our solutions, whether it's Grace Hopper or Hopper or Blackwell, um, to just make it easier for you to consume uh, GPUs. And um, uh, we've, we've thought through the security, we've thought through upgrades on this, so you can literally just start submitting jobs. Um, and today it's available on our reserved um, clusters, which are things like the Grace Hopper cluster, uh, but uh, also our H100 and very soon to come H200 environments. So um, what we've seen so far, especially in the Grace Hopper space and Kubernetes, is that it works, which is fantastic. Um, the standard distribution works, which is great. Um, and that most of the accelerators are also working. And so uh, things like um, the run AI uh, replacement scheduler work. Um, things that we've seen around the kubectl extensions work. Um, so really great news about what we're seeing with Kubernetes on Grace. Uh, we're excited to see what the community does between now and next year as uh, Grace Blackwell releases. And so that's it, really. And I've got a few minutes if there's questions or if you guys are asleep and need to just enjoy your naps, we can do that too. Um, but yeah, uh, so that was what we did, thanks.